Welcome to tutorial number 5. This tutorial will be on creating a fake saturation shader. Right now I'm using the pass through shader as a base and I'm editing this shader. Uh, let's go to the fragment. So how are we going to do this? One way to do this uh, that I think looks pretty decent is if you do the opposite of what the grayscale shader does. So let's kind of replicate what the grayscale shader was doing and I will switch the shader in the scene to this new saturation shader. So first, if you remember from the last tutorial, we had a luminance. So we had a luminance value which equaled the color dot r times 0.2, I think. Plus color dot g times 0 0.7 plus color dot b times uh, 0 0.1 yeah uh, I'll just bring this all into one line because it'll get messy later on so we're gonna make the grayscale shader again and as you can see it looks like a grayscale shader, right? It looks, everything's gray. Uh, we want to do the opposite effect. So I'm gonna introduce a new concept right now. Uh, you saw earlier when we did the, I think it might've been the lighting tutorial, although I'm not sure uh, which tutorial it was, but we saw you could define a macro. Uh, we'll do this again because these are nice. Uh, if you want a, these are nice because they kind of signal to the user what you can change, what variables you can change. We will define the saturation as 1.0 for now. And we'll change it later to see the results. So this variable sat equals 1.0. Let me make this a little bit bigger so we can see. I'll just full screen it actually. So the incentive behind this is basically we take the difference between the color and the luminance and that'll be sort of the vector that we multiply to saturation value. So let's create a new vector. So vec3 diff equals uh, vec or color dot RGB minus vec3 of luminance. Okay, now why are we doing this? Because the difference will tell us how far apart the color is from grayscale. So, uh, it, in theory, if we multiply that difference by some value, we should get um, values that are farther away from grayscale. So it would appear more saturated. Or we can desaturate it by uh, multiplying those values by a decimal value. We'll change the output here. Pull this down. And we will do vec3 diff plus so difference times saturation plus luminance. Okay. And this is what we originally get because we're just multiplying this difference value by um, by the saturation factor, which is one in this case. I noticed that in the difference when we created this difference value, it was color to RGB minus luminance, uh, a vec three of that. We add back in luminance, and we're multiplying diff by sat, so that should equal. Um, and sat equals 1, so that means uh, we should be getting Keller back, or at least Keller's RGB value. So, if we change saturation, we'll, we should, in theory, be able to be more saturated, or have this image have more saturation. And it kind of looks like this, right? It's a lot more colorful. Um, we can even go to sort of extreme values if we wanted to. 
and have something extremely saturated. There are more accurate equations for saturation in case you were wanting to implement this, but this one I feel works pretty well. It's also pretty quick. All right, so if we did something like 0.5, it's desaturated. It's not quite grayscale because you can see the yellow and green values, but it's getting close. Uh, if we do something like 0.75, you can see it's almost uh, to regular lighting, but it's a little bit desaturated. Um, and just to do a comparison, if we do 1.0, this would be the default value. So you can keep adjusting this. Uh, this was just a short tutorial because um, I'll try to do shorter tutorials as I think they're a little bit easier to grasp um, and keep all that information. Anyway, if you have any suggestions, post them below or any effects you want to see next. Um, be sure to let me know and I'll try to get to them. Thanks for watching.